So we're here talking today with Dr. Uma Puragala, and she is going to be hosting an event coming up on February 11th. That's a Wednesday night from 7 to 9 p.m. at the Dunlop Auditorium at St. Clair Hospital. Very easy to find, uh, very easy to park and get to. Welcome, Dr. Uma. Hi. Great to be here. So tell us a little bit about this lifestyle medicine seminar series that you've been doing. Okay, I think this is probably the fifth one we've had. And uh, I, I have about one every three months. And the first one we had was on um, a plant-based diet. It was called Demystifying the Plant-Based Plate. And uh, I, I had no uh, plans of having any more, but it just snowballed and it was addictive. And I, I enjoyed it. I learned tons and I, it was received really well. And I can't imagine not having this aspect of my uh, my career be reaching out to people and talking about non-pharmaceutical ways of um, healing thyself. That's really awesome. Now, we uh, we both come up with this term lifestyle medicine uh, independently for the things that we do. Tell me what lifestyle medicine means to you. Uh, I, I believe it's self-study focusing on, again, non-pharmaceutical ways of you know, healing the body primarily through di the diet. Um, that is the center point for how I improved my health dramatically and the science is overwhelming. And then um, of course, movement and uh, physical activity, whatever uh, that may be. And then the mind. And even though that's the third thing on the list, I, I find it to be the most important part of the whole puzzle. Right. So tell us about the, uh, on uh, February 11th, you're going to have uh, Bob from Three Rivers Yoga. Yeah, he's amazing. I'm glad I started taking lessons with him. I had been migrating from one place to the other, but uh, he knows his stuff and it's worth the journey. But uh, what we're going to be focusing on, I'm going to be speaking for about a half an hour and I'm going to focus on Patanjali's Yoga Sutras and how there's a lot of parallels with positive psychology and what uh, uh, Patanjali was talking about in how to harness the vrittis, the vibrations of the mind, and slow them down so that you can see more lucidly. Mm. And um, we're going to correlate that with a lot of science. There's certainly good data with the, the cardiovascular health and the breathing aspect in particular of yoga. And then, of course, back pain, there's some superb studies on that and it's quite impressive and then bob's going to speak and i'm i i don't know what he's going to talk about but i'm sure it's going to be spectacular he uh you know i don't think he's going to need powerpoint i think he's just going to need space and then finally we're going to have a physician from upmc and he's also a student and an instructor uh under bob's tutelage and he's been taking yoga for many years, and his name is Dr. Joseph Lanzarata, and he is the occupational medicine, uh, the uh, director of occupational medicine at UPMC. So, awesome! It is going to be interesting. Oh, that's so that's so exciting. Well, I, I love how uh, you are bringing together so many different uh, integrated medicine professionals for each one of your talks. You've had uh, at least one or two other people talking at each one of your your event. So it's, that's been a real exciting part to see. Yeah. One thing leads to another, right? You know, you just like, like meeting you, you know, it, yeah. it, it it's not by accident. You know, you came to one of our seminar seminars and you connected me with a lot of people and I, I really enjoy your journal. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, one of the things that uh, I want to go back to that you said that I thought was really important is uh, on slowing down the mind. And uh, I, I know from my studies with yoga that uh, in, in the oldest traditions, as I understand it, uh, the practice of, of the movements, the asanas, what we, what the postures, uh, was all prelude to meditation. It was a way of slowing down the nervous system so that your whole, your whole being would be ready for meditation. Is that something that you understand, or is that something that you'll be talking about? Oh, it's a deep part of it. You know, when I, I've been meditating for about 10 years now and just sitting there free fall, it's, it's, it can be scary. It can be boring. And, uh, the medit the yoga asanas take advantage of 
uh, if you're tired, stimulating that sympathetic, you know, nervous system that, you know, get up and go, you know, run away from that tiger nervous system. And then the parasympathetic nervous system, you know, it, it helps harness that, you know, rest and digest, relax nervous system. And it's really quite organized. Every time I study anything with Ayurveda or yoga or meditation, um, it's it seems so bizarre and it disjointed. And and then you go deeper into to it, you find out, wow, this is extremely scientific. There's a precision to it. So, you know, yes, definitely the asanas have helped uh, control my own, you know, uh, tormenting thoughts. And yeah. we all have them. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Any uh, any last things you want to say about uh, some any of the science that you'll be covering? Well, okay. So back pain is uh, the length of stay. Uh, there was an article published in Pain, and then another one in Spine, and recently in the Annals of Internal Medicine, all saying that the uh, the days of um, time off of work is about eight point five days less. The money that's saved by employers is um, substantial. So, um, and as far as the cardiovascular, I don't have to say much more except that, you know, Medicare pays for Dr. Dean Ornish's wellness program because it's evidence-based and he's, he's published numerous, um, studies on, um, uh, cardiovascular, um, health and this type of intervention. And then the breathing aspect, we know that it definitely improves blood pressure. Um, and then there's a lot of studies on schizophrenia and um, uh, Iyengar yoga, and it's quite helpful. And I think there it was a multi-centered study, and it was published in a Scandinavian journal. Um, and then just there's something called executive functioning, and that's that part of our brain, uh, primarily through the prefrontal cortex, that uh, is a barometer to determine should I have that fudge brownie or should I have that oatmeal. And it, uh, it's this part of the brain that in yoga we call buddhi. And buddhi, you know, is, is that same discriminative factor. And so this is what modern science is showing that uh, executive functioning dramatically improves when you do the, the asanas in yoga. And then the meditation part, we know that it thickens the prefrontal cortex. So that is just awesome. Mm -hmm. I hate bringing out that prescription pad when I know there's just so much more that can be done. But. Well, that is the quote of the day. Thank you so much for that. All right, thank you so much for inviting me to this call. Bet. So once again, it's uh, Wednesday, February 11th at St. Clair Hospital in the Dunlop Auditorium from 7 to 9 p.m. And it's what, $15? $10, there's gonna $10. be uh, food sampling. Oh, wow, that's right, yeah. yeah. Great, I would say yeah. great food sampling. Awesome. Yes, thank you. I, I cook it myself. So uh, that really touches me that you said that. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you, you gift us with uh, recipes on your website, too. The the plant-based plate is your yes. website.com. Yes. Right? Okay, yes. great. Well, thanks once again, Dr. Ruba.